Okay. Now, because I fear sounding way too wonky in this video, I went ahead and I compiled a list that you can see over my left shoulder. I think I think it's my left shoulder, but it might be my right shoulder. Uh, I compiled a list in the about this video section that is going to show specifically what I'm talking about, and I'm not going to give long rants about it because I don't want to bore you guys to tears. But let me just say that there are certain things in politics that it's very easy for both liberals and conservatives to agree on. The only people who don't seem to get it are the people representing us in Washington. Okay, so this is cutting the deficit for dummies. Make pork barrel spending illegal. That would save us $20 billion a year. For those of you who don't know, pork barrel spending is things attached to major bills, usually, that buy off the votes of politicians. Things like the Shrimp Museum in Louisiana, funding that, funding the Alaska State Fair, putting Christian broadcasting stations in Madagascar, don't ask me how that got on a bill. But usually it's things that are way outside of what the government should be doing that make it into a bill to buy somebody's vote for the meat and potatoes of the bill. So if you make that illegal, that's $20 billion saved right away. End all no-bid contracts. No-bid contracts are when the government say to a certain company or corporation, we're going to give you government money and you're going to do this task for us. Now the reason why no-bid contracts are so bad is because it's the most wasteful, inefficient way to contract out. Usually it has to do with nepotism. It's Dick Cheney saying to Halliburton, uh, I used to work for you and I have friends over there, so you guys are going to get this contract for the most grossly overpriced value that we're going to give it to you for. Uh, that would save us $40 billion. Eliminate Medicare Part D. For those of you who don't know, Medicare Part D was passed under George W. Bush. And basically what it was is a large subsidy to the pharmaceutical industry and to the health insurance industry, which was supposed to provide supplemental coverage for old people. In other words, if they felt like their regular Medicare wasn't doing well enough, they can use Medicare Part D. They can buy into that system. In reality, what it was is $40 billion down the drain. Close offshore tax havens. If that's not the most common sense thing in the world, I don't know what is. That would save us $100 billion a year. A majority of the people who use offshore tax havens are people who are rich in the first place and are just trying to avoid being taxed on their 14th home. Uh, and the drug war. That would save us $14 billion. Now, before everybody says, oh, Kyle's so pro-drug use, let me just say real fast, I am. But uh, apart from that, every single study that has come out has shown that since the drug war has been implemented, the drug usage rates have stayed about the same or actually increased slightly. And on top of that, there is wanton violence on the Mexican border and in Texas and in Mexico because the war is being fought in a gruesome fashion. So if we cut that out, we save $14 billion and we, uh, we get to smoke some weed. Um, cut $8 billion off of NASA. Now, I understand it's an important thing to go to the moon and to try to go to Mars. But when we're about to go broke, maybe we can make an exception or two. Eliminate subsidies for oil and gas companies. That would save us $40 billion a year. That's corporate welfare. I know how the Republicans hate welfare, so I'm sure they'll be against this. Uh, bank tax. It repays taxpayers for the Wall Street bailout. That's $10 billion right there. They're actually debating that in Congress now. 
Uh, a retroactive 100% tax on Wall Street bonuses. Um, this would save us $145 billion. Um, these are, this is money that corporations got, or people at corporations got, when those people were responsible for running the corporation into the ground, they were rewarded for that with our money. Not fair, I agree, let's take it back. Okay. Uh, reform the healthcare system, copying the best system in the world. I'm sorry, I know the conservatives are going to hate that I'm saying this. But this isn't conjecture, this isn't opinion, this isn't me giving my 10 cents, this is just a fact, at least according to the studies, and the scientists, and the experts, you know, if you believe those assholes. Um, the World Health Organization, for one, says, France's healthcare system is by far more efficient than ours is, covers more people, and we would save $900 billion a year if we switched to their system and copied their system. Okay. Uh, the last one, probably the most politically impossible to successfully do because you would come across as looking like a little pussy, is cutting the military budget. Currently we spend $607 billion every year on military spending. That's what uh, the government gives to the Pentagon. Now, the nearest place that spends the closest amount to us in the world is Russia, and they're spending 89 billion a year. 607 billion versus 89 billion. Now, why don't we just go ahead and cut 507 billion off of ours? which, of course, would require us getting out of all of these countries that we've been sitting in for 40, 50 years, countries like Japan and Germany. We have bases everywhere. It's unnecessary. We have an empire right now. We might as well dismantle it while we're ahead to save some money. So we have $507 billion saved. We have an $100 billion budget, which is still $15 billion more than the nearest competitor, which is Russia. Um, and with all of those things added up together, you ready for this? The CBO estimates that our deficit in 2009 is going to be between 6.7 trillion, I'm sorry, 1.67 trillion and 1.85 trillion. But with our savings, which we just went through right now, that would be a total savings of 1.8 trillion dollars, which means in an hour's worth of research and some common sense, we went ahead and balanced the budget.